you have to watch for folk wisdom. There was this guy I would occasionally work for, and I, for the most part, totally respected his opinion. He was competent, and according to him, the best way to maintain a healthy septic tank is to, well, what you want to do is you want to throw in a groundhog every year. You'll never have a problem with it. A groundhog, if you don't already know, is a furry organic mass that contains a whole bunch of bone and other septic clogging compounds. <laughs> okay, well, there's a basis in reality for his opinion here. The idea is that a septic is a controlled environment where there's a bacterial culture and it helps to break down the... The problem is you don't really know what's in a groundhog bacterial mass, do you? It's an extra variable. The system is designed to work without your help. It will work naturally, so it's folk wisdom to throw in baker's yeast or whatever you heard will help this function correctly. It doesn't need your help. What it needs from you is periodic maintenance to keep it functioning correctly. So what you hear is the dripping of my morning shower into the tank. Starting back at the house, sorry the sun is really bright, waste water comes in through a four inch pipe, deposits itself into one of these tanks, Underneath each of these rocks, there's a an access. And the first tank holds sediment that's on the top of which there's like a floating blob of gelatinous fats and oils. And underneath, that's where the work takes place. That's where the solid waste starts to break down. So there's a partition, and then you have a second cell into which the liquids kind of overflows in and there will still be kind of a sludge here and then what you do is you pump that the liquid that floats to the top you pump it off and up to this mound and then and through a series of plumbing all of the water is dispersed onto this mound which is just a bed of gravel and then it just seeps into the groundwater and gets filtered okay the problem is that everything functions here right up to this point. It's no longer draining. Why? What's going on? Whenever the pump runs here, it pushes the water up to there and what is supposed to be a series of little tiny holes in the PVC pipes, it is presumably clogged because it will just spurt out of these four corner clean out things, which I'll show you a close up of them in a little bit. But they're a foot high and there's a 90 degree elbow that goes into a series of parallel running pipes that I haven't been able to map out yet despite my best effort. But anyhow, uh, let's consider. One possibility is that the septic system is just filled. It's inundated and it just can't process as, as much waste product as we're putting into this. That is not likely because there's only two people here most of the time I pee outside, and we're very conscientious about what we put into this. We don't waste water. We don't use any bizarre soaps, and actually I have rather sensitive skin, so I only use white bar soap. I don't even use shampoo. I also don't take any medications, and there are no antibiotics or any other medical-related compounds that would be going into this tank that would be altering its environment. Also, this has been cleaned. It was clean. I cleaned it as soon as I moved in, and so it's not burdened with too much product. So if it doesn't have too much, then could it be that what it does have, it's not breaking down effectively? That is to say, does that mean that it's a bacterial problem? Should I u introduce a new bacterial colony like that, Red X product, product or something like that? Okay, so go back to what I said before. Hopefully, no. You don't want to do that. That's a last resort because this should be a system that naturally balances without your killing it with kindness. It can function on its own. 
but not now because it's not functioning. Something's wrong. Septic treatment products contain extremely aggressive bacteria. So if you were to dump that down your toilet and it goes into the tank, it's going to aggressively break down the stuff that's in here, the sludge, that we want to get pumped out by a pump truck. This is hard to explain, let me say again. You want to hold this crap here until the pump truck can suck it out. If you try to break it down, it's going to break down into small particles that get, end up getting flushed through here and up into the mound where it clogs that. So you can kill it with kindness. The process proceeds mathematically. We know what it does. It holds it there. It drains the wastewater. It functions. Everything's fine until you throw in your whatever your grandpa told you to throw in, like a groundhog or baker's yeast, and then it ad adds an additional variable that you can't account for, and then you don't know what's going to happen. So don't do any of that stuff. Just pump it out. But, okay, we're, the topic of this is about drain fields. I just wanted to clear the floor here and get rid of all of that uh, superstitious folk wisdom. Also, before we leave the topic, bleach does not cure poison ivy. So without further rambling, let's jump right in, figuratively. Okay, so look way down in here and you'll see the float. I'll have to adjust the camera, but you'll look for this little black float that's on the side of the pump. You'll just see it as a little tiny reflection right there. And now I'm gonna use a stick to lift it up. It's about four feet down there in case the camera's confusing for you. But this little float, is attached to the pump and when I lift it up, watch what happens. The pump starts running and now look what happens over here. That is not how a drain field is supposed to function. I will say this though, it's incredibly good for the grass. <laughs> Okay, so we have four of these things, and we can use this information to help diagnose what's going on here. Wow, I have my very own fountain. It's high class. This is not ideal. It smells, and I want it to drain on this mound so that it doesn't alert me to the fact that it's happening at all. I don't want to know about it. So let's work on fixing this problem. If we go back to the septic tank, there's a check valve. And what that does is, as it pumps up, whenever the pump's done, what remains in the line doesn't go back because the check valve is a one-way valve that only lets water forward and doesn't let it come back. The reason for that is because this is, oh, I don't know, maybe 200 feet and it would just cause the pump to run a whole bunch more than I wanted to and then you would suffer premature pump failure. Now because I don't want to kill this system with kindness, I don't want to treat the septic tank itself with an emergency cleaner. I only want the cleaner to work on this drain field. So what I'm going to do is use the check valve to isolate this part of the system. But before I do anything, I'm going to try to mechanically, physically clean this system out as best as I can. I've already tried digging everywhere to try to understand the layout of this system and I can't for the life of me determine anything for certain, except that each of these pipes has approximately a nine foot run that's in a um, parallel line. Presumably they took a 10 foot piece of PVC pipe and used a one foot cutoff for the riser right here. And then the nine foot piece is right there. So at least at minimum, I'll be able to use my snake device, which is a pressure washer thing I'll show you in a little bit, to get approximately 40 feet of cleared line before I do my treatment. Sorry if you're having trouble following along, there's a lot to this. Of all of the machines I've owned in my life, this is perhaps the least reliable. It's been awful. Don't ever buy this brand. 
but I'm stuck with it and I've modified it heavily and I'm going to make use of it. It's just a pressure washer and I've ordered from the interwebs this kit, which for the low, low price of overpriced contains four specialty fitting, fittings and attachments, some Teflon tape and a long hose, it's like 50 feet. It's reasonably flexible, but most important, if you take this protecting, bend protecting sheath and pull it back, most importantly of all, it will fit through with some effort a 90 degree elbow in an inch and a half pipe. On this end, we'll put a quick connect on it. It's even stainless steel, it's fancy. This will attach to the wand of the pressure washer. This will be useless. This supposedly sprays out of the side and rotates. I don't know if it will actually work. We'll test, test it and find out. But it has a little tiny jet and it rotates. Yeah, whatever. But this is the fitting that I expect will actually produce the result. It is a jet that sprays forward and several if you can see them on there. Several that spray backwards. So as we push it through the pipe, it will force its way into the clog and then force whatever it dislodges back behind it. And so this should work, at least in theory. I'll start at the top of the clean out. I can easily get nine feet from each uh, elbow. And then what I'll do is, at on that end of the system where it's uh, where it has a check valve, I'll open the check valve up, I'll disassemble it, and let all of this flush down into the septic tank, at which time I'll have the septic tank pumped so we'll get rid of all of this stuff. Then, t at least tentatively, the follow-up plan, and after I tell you this, you can probably stop watching this video, the follow-up plan is to well, first I will reattach the uh, check valve and it'll take a couple days for the septic tank's water level to rise up enough to lift the pump float enough to flush this back out. So we won't know if it's cleared yet. During that time, over the course of a couple days, I'll have the check valve in place and I'll insert a garden hose down into here past where I was able to flush it out to find presumably where the clog is near the distribution block or you know where it tees off or wherever where there's still water sitting in it I'll insert the garden hose in and pour down some septic treatment and then what I'm going to do is have a, a new bacterial aggressive bacterial culture that will hopefully open up the, any holes and break down the uh, bacterial mass, the mat that's in there and then hopefully I can flush it out again with this thing and we'll be in working order. I hope that made sense. I hope you got all that. Okay, I gotta get to work. No, there is no link. You can find you can do the research yourself, figure out which one you think is best. I bought this out of convenience, not because I think it's the best. This is not a tool review. Which one of these pressure jet things you use is totally incidental. It's just a hose with a thing on the end. In fact, I tried to make one out of a pneumatic hose, but I shot the tip off and cut my hand, so don't do that. Preliminary experimentation shows that this little lip gets caught as you pull back, and it might really get stuck in this elbow. So let's fix that before we do anything. Just want to smooth the bump a little bit. Good enough. In our spare time today, we can also replace the transaxle in the riding mower. Uh, I already opened it up, the transmission part of it, and inside there are these what are called uh, clutch keys. And conveniently enough, they're a discontinued part which is virtually impossible to get. And the only distributor is in a foreign country and charges so much that it was cheaper for me to go on Craigslist and buy a completely different um, 
model. And so I have to restore that and probably take it apart too. But this is way off topic, so back to this. Pressure washer is in position up on the hill. And before I can squirt anything back in this direction, I have to disconnect something here because the check valve underneath is prohibiting flow in this direction. This piece of pipe is just a prop to keep this thing in place under high pressure. So once that's out of the way, watch out. I have a screen. I've stapled the corners so I can insert the pipe into here. And this will act like a filter that will catch anything that's flowing in this way and screen it out just so we can find out what we got out of this mess. Quick refresher. This is just a regular pressure washer. And into the quick connect, I'm going to stick this end of the hose and the other end has this on it. This is a jet that shoots both forward and backwards, and I'm going to run it down all four of these clean-out pipes. I've run it through all four at this point, and it was quite easy. It took all 50 feet of the hose with no problem. Because it shoots backwards, it kind of propels the nozzle forward and kind of digs its way through. The biggest problem seemed to be getting it to drain out quick enough because it's shooting water behind it. It won't let it drain through and flush the system. And I don't think these nozzles work underwater. Also, the bag, the collection screen back at the beginning, it had nothing in it. And I think that's just because there isn't enough flow in a garden hose in order to flush it out. But what we'll do is run the pump when I'm all done and I'll drive this stuff out one way or another. Next I'll flush out all four with this fitting and the way it works is it kind of rotates as you put water through it. Now just imagine this under pressure. This is without the pressure washer on. I cut very little sediment in the screen. Everything's hooked back up now and it's time to trigger the float and I've capped. Okay, the float triggered itself as Mrs. Pocket just flipped the breaker. I've capped three of the four clean outs and that will give me a high pressure in the one remaining. Let's go check it out. The pump is running at full and this is the only open cap. So there it goes. Now it's flushing out all of the debris, hopefully. At this point, it would be nice if it were to just start draining, but I guess it's good enough to say that I tried the best I could, and at this point, I'll drain the septic and treat this part of the system. If I weren't already so accustomed to troubleshooting and problem solving stupid things like this, I might be a little bit disappointed that it didn't work on the first try. But anything that you want to work takes commitment. Hi again. Two years have passed. And I guess it has been a successful two years because the system has been working without any problems at all. Obviously, I didn't want to post a how to fix your leech field video unless I actually knew how to fix a leech field. <laughs> so I waited two years before editing the footage. I just finished doing that, and now I would like to finish explaining to you what I did over the next few days from where we left off. It would have been really inconsiderate for me to have continued filming while the septic tank pumping guy was here. But... It turned out that he was a great guy. He held a degree in biology, 
and he totally understood what I was trying to accomplish and to my delight was in complete agreement with the idea to isolate that um, bacterial culture to just the piping system. So let me explain how I went about it. Okay, visual aid time. First, pretend that these are five gallon buckets that you've filled with warm water. And next, pretend that this soap water is actually that bacteria product that you buy. The goal is to propagate as much of this stuff as we can because you start out with just a little bottle. So into these buckets of warm water, we dump it and we let it rest for, you know, 24, 48 hours. This concoction can start brewing before you've even pumped your septic tank. Hopefully now there's more than what we had started with. And from here, we can just dump it right into the clean outs. We want to spread it across as much surface area as we can. And so we want to get it down as deep into the system as we can, as close to the check valve as possible without spilling into the septic tank. Divide this into four parts, dump it quickly into each clean out. Pretend this is your septic tank, which is now empty and it is slowly filling up as this culture is spreading. We're going to dump some into each clean out and we want it to coat the insides everywhere and the bacterial colony to establish itself before we allow the pump to kick on and flush all of this out. At which time, all of it will spread to the bacterial mat, which is up in the drain field, and hopefully the system will be working. And so it's been about balance. It's now the two years have passed. I'm going to pump the septic tank again, and I've been cautious over this two years, and hopefully I'll get another two years without having to add further treatment. I hope that I know this was long. I hope that it was useful to you. There's a lot of stuff to consider. I hope I didn't spoon feed you too much. I wish you the best of luck if you've had this problem. Give this a try first. It's not that hard. And now for my next trick, if you're interested. These cleanouts are awful to cut grass around. So I'm going to devise a flush mount for them. We'll do that in another video and I'll try not to be so long-winded in that one. Thanks for joining me. See you later.